In this video, we're going to break down two important statistical tools, the one sample t-test and the two sample t-test. These are both used when you're asking questions like, do two different groups have different averages? Is a group's average different from some expected number? Before we can get into formulas, let's first understand what these tests are really about and why they matter. Let's start with the one sample t-test. Let's say a school claims their average score is 75, but you think your class is doing better. So you gather data from a sample of students in your class. The question is, is your class's average significantly higher than 75? Before we begin, we should check our assumptions. We assume the data is from a random sample, that it's approximately normal, and that the population standard deviation is unknown. Once our assumptions are in place, we can begin. Let's start by stating the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is mu equals 75. This means there is no significant difference between your class's mean and the mean of the school. The alternative hypothesis, H1, is that the mean is greater than 75. This means that your class scores are significantly higher. This is called a right-tailed test because we're checking if the sample mean falls far enough to the right or higher than the claimed mean. A left-tailed test would check if the sample mean is significantly less than the claimed value. A two-tailed test checks for any difference, either higher or lower. Now let's move on to calculating the t-test statistic. The sample mean is 78.2. The sample standard deviation is 6.5. The sample size is n. Just imagine there are 20 students in that circle. And the hypothesized population mean in the question is 75. To calculate the t-value, we use this formula. t equals x bar minus mu sub 0 over s divided by the square root of n, where x bar is the sample mean, mu sub 0 is the hypothesized population mean, s is the sample standard deviation, and n is the sample size. The t-statistic is a way of measuring how far your sample mean is from your expected mean. A larger t-value means the difference is bigger compared to what we'd expect from a random variation. t is equal to 78.2 minus 75 over 6.5 over the square root of 20, which is approximately equal to 2.2. Now it's time to make a decision. There are two main ways to decide if your result is statistically significant. The p-value approach, which we'll go over in another video linked below, and the critical value approach, which we'll use now. In the critical value approach, we compare the t-statistic to a critical t-value from a table. The critical t-value is a cutoff point. If your test statistic is beyond this point, the result is considered rare enough to reject the null hypothesis. Let's take a look at how to use a table to find the critical t value. For our one sample example, we select a significance level of 0.05, which is a common choice. And it means that we are willing to accept a 5% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. To find an approximation of our degrees of freedom, we subtract one from the sample size 20 minus 1, and we get 19. In a video linked below, I demonstrate how to find the exact degrees of freedom using the TI-84 or the Calculate 84 app. But for now, this approximation will work for our purposes. To find the critical t-value for our right-tailed test, we look at our selected significance level of 0.05 at the top of the table and we look for our degrees of freedom of 19 on the side of the table. The critical t value in that row and that column is approximately 1.73. Going back to our previous work, we learned that our t value is 2.2. If the t value is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Comparing our t value of 2.2 
to our critical value of 1.73, we see that our T value is greater than our critical value. Since 2.2 is greater than 1.73, we reject the null hypothesis, which leads to the conclusion, your class average is slightly higher than 75. Now, let's shift gears to a two-sample t-test, used when you want to compare the means of two independent groups. Here's the scenario. Do students who sleep at least eight hours have different scores than those who don't? First, we need to check the following assumptions. The two groups are independent. Each group is roughly normal. The data was collected randomly. All right, now we're ready to state our hypotheses. In this case, the null hypothesis, H0, says that one mean is equal to the other. That means there's no difference in the means. The alternative hypothesis states that one mean is not equal to the other. The group means are different. This is a two-tailed test because we're open to either group having the higher mean. We're just checking to see if there's a difference in any direction. Here is our data. For two sample t-tests, we use this formula to find t. t equals x sub 1 bar minus x sub 2 bar over the square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. x sub 1 bar is the mean of the first sample, while x sub 2 bar is the mean of the second sample. S1 is the standard deviation of the first sample, while S2 is the standard deviation of the second sample. N1 is the sample size for the first sample, and N2 is the sample size for the second sample. Once we plug all those values in, we get that T is equal to 2.58. To find an approximation of our degrees of freedom for a two-tailed test, we add the sample sizes, and this time we subtract 2. 25 plus 22 minus 2. The degrees of freedom is approximately 45. In order to make a decision, we're going to be using the critical value approach again. We calculated t is equal to 2.58, or degrees of freedom is approximately equal to 45. The significance level that we've chosen is 0 0.05. To find the critical t value, Let's look back at the table, but before we do, because it's a two-tailed t-test and the table shows only one tail, we have to split the significance level in half, 0 0.025 for the left and 0 0.025 for the right. Now, we find 0 0.025 at the top and look for the degrees of freedom closest to 45 on the left side of the table. The critical T value is approximately equal to 2.014. Since 2.58 is greater than 2.014, we reject the null hypothesis once again, this time leading to the conclusion that students who sleep eight or more hours are significantly different from those who don't. Here's a summary of what we've learned. A one-sample t-test compares a sample mean to a known or claimed value. A two-sample t-test compares the means of two independent groups. The t-statistic measures how far your data is from what you'd expect under the null. The p-value tells you how likely your result is under the null. The significance level is your cutoff for deciding what is rare and the critical t-value is like a boundary. Cross it and your result is significant.